October 14th is the annular solar eclipse. Are you ready for the ring of fire? That's right. This upcoming Saturday is the annular solar eclipse here in the U.S., Mexico, and some other countries in South and Central America. We're going to talk about what's happening as well as what a solar eclipse is, specifically an annular solar eclipse. And we're going to talk about the different ways that you can watch, but also how we'll be watching. This is Today in Space. Thanks for joining us. Let's dive right in. Folks, I am your space science podcast host from the East Coast, Alex Giorfanos. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Today in Space, the all things space science podcast. And as we just talked about, this week we're covering the annular solar eclipse. So October 14th, 2023 is the annular solar eclipse. It can be observed in the lower 48 states of the U.S., in Mexico, and many other countries in South and Central America. In the U.S., the annular solar eclipse begins in Oregon at 9.13 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, in Roswell, New Mexico at 9.15 Mountain Daylight Time, and it ends in Texas at 12.03 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So that is where the path of totality is, but it will be seen across the U.S. and other portions of the Americas here. And while we'll be here in New England, we will get a partial solar eclipse, about 20% where we are here in Mass, Massachusetts. We'll be using our telescope, but we'll talk about that and how we're going to do that in a little bit. But first, let's just talk about the basics. What is an annular solar eclipse? You've probably heard of a solar eclipse before. It's when the sun, the moon, and the earth all line up in the orbital plane, and the moon blocks the sun on a portion of the Earth. While the Moon isn't quite in the same alignment orbitally as the Sun and Earth, the alignment doesn't happen very often. Twice a year, though, there is something called eclipse season when this does happen, and these three orbiting bodies actually do line up. But there are different types of solar eclipses. We'll focus on two here. The total solar eclipse is when the moon is between the sun and the earth, and from the ground, the moon completely covers the sun. Darkness actually occurs temporarily, as the sun is entirely blocked out. This happened recently on the Great American Eclipse back in 2017. We actually got to see a partial version of that early in the podcast, but we've never been in an actual total solar eclipse. But in 2024, we do plan to do that. But More on that another time. Now, sometimes the moon is orbiting farther away from Earth so that on the ground, the moon during the eclipse doesn't fully cover the sun. It's actually smaller in in relation. This is the annular solar eclipse. And while you don't get the total darkness from a total solar eclipse, you do get the ring of fire where the outer edges of the sun can be seen circling a dark moon that isn't fully covering it. So you want to make sure to look out for many pictures online from astrophotographers trying to capture this ring of fire. It's really cool, especially with some high-grade equipment where you can get some details and possibly see some solar activity. It's Very cool. And one day we will get out there to capture one. So now this leads us to how you can observe the annular solar eclipse. So assuming you are having good enough weather where you can actually do this, fingers crossed here in New England, you always want to make sure you view the sun with the right equipment. Never, never, never look directly at the sun. Even if it's partially or fully covered by the moon in in an eclipse, It's just not worth it. The sun is literally a giant nuclear fusion reactor in the sky. And even though the sun is 150 million kilometers away and light from it took about 8.3 minutes to get to us, it still has enough power to damage your eyes. So just don't do it. You don't want to permanently damage them. It's not worth it. But you can still do it. So we're going to talk about how you can do that. The first is with a pinhole viewer. This is something I want to have with me at any kind of eclipse because it's just a great tool. You can pass it around for people to view. It's not cumbersome like 
uh, like someone who has glasses like myself, those solar glasses, sometimes they don't quite fit. Looking into an eye lens of a filtered telescope is kind of tough. The pinhole viewer is really, really easy. And what you do is you have a box with a pinhole. That light is shining through on the inside front edge of the box and you have a hole to view it. That way you're not even facing the sun and all you're looking at is the light from through that pinhole of the sun and you can actually see this shadow come in front of the moon. We did this for one of the partial solar eclipses and it was very cool. To make one, it's actually pretty easy. You'll need a cardboard box, a piece of aluminum foil, a pin or a sharp point, and some tape, scissors, or maybe a utility blade, something to cut the cardboard. So essentially, you're making a square hole on the back of this box and then looking through the side to see the reflection. So with your box, you're going to want to cut out a square hole on the back and put that aluminum foil on there, tape it, and then put a pinhole in it. It does not have to be big. The sun is far enough away, a pinhole will work perfectly. Now you're gonna go with the pinhole on the back side. You're gonna hold the front side where this pinhole from the light is gonna reflect on that wall. You want a viewing hole up front. So you're gonna cut a hole out there so that you can hold the box on your shoulder with the sun behind you and you'll have the viewing right there. And it's really that simple. We have ours that we used back in 2017 and we still have it around and plan to use it on October 14th. Next, you can view the solar eclipse with eclipse glasses. And you can also get these as a cheap option, but you need to make sure they come from a legit source. You don't want to get some of those cheap ones, and we're gonna offer you a little bit of advice on what to look for, but there's also this link from NASA to make sure that you get it right. So just be careful because this is higher risk. You're actually looking at the sun, so mistakes can happen. Do everything you can to make sure that your eyes are okay. So things to look out for. There's an actual standard for solar eclipse glasses. It's ISO 12312-2. So if you're getting your solar glasses, it should have that ISO number on there. If it does not, it's suspicious probably don't want to get those. If you have some old glasses, you want to make sure that the lens, the filter in the glasses is not bent or scratched because that's going to make the filter less effective and then you're basically looking at the sun again, unprotected. Like I said before, in the show notes, we're going to have a link from NASA that actually talks about what to look for with solar glasses. It has some good advice, but it's also a good source for finding them as well. So they are out there. I know some local libraries will source them. So ask around. I'm sure you might find some at some gas stations, but again, be really careful where they come from. There's a lot of fakes out there. Next up, you can watch the solar eclipse with a telescope. This is a fantastic way to view the sun, but you really, really need to be careful. You know, since there's optics involved, the risk of damaging your eyes is much higher because now you're focusing that sunlight into a smaller portion and you wanna make sure that you're safe before you put your eye against that eyepiece. Never point a telescope or any optic at the sun without a filter. Don't do it. As for us, we're going to be viewing the partial solar eclipse here in Massachusetts with our Vespera telescope here. And we have a solar filter from Veonis that we bought through them that we've been viewing the sun for a while here. So we know that this is safe from them. And the other beautiful thing that a smart telescope like Vespera we don't have an eyepiece to look through. So there is no risk as the user for me to look at the sun with this telescope. All the risk is on the telescope. So obviously I don't want our Vespera to be damaged. So we always make sure there is a solar filter. And Veonis also has a really nice, in their Singularity app, there is a solar viewing mode and there are plenty of alerts to make sure that you aren't pointing the telescope and damaging it by pointing it at the sun. And so since we know this is a good filter, this is a good example of showing you how much it's actually blocking the sun. And you can do this with solar glasses. Before you look at the sun, look at a bright light source. So our filter here, we're gonna take our cell phone light, put it right behind here, and you'll see you can barely see anything at all. So we'll be taking long exposure pictures of the sun as our partial solar eclipse happens. We'll put together a video, we'll share, share some content because why not? And make sure to look out there. I mean, if you're out there, you don't have a pinhole eclipse viewer, you don't have solar glasses, or 
proper solar filter telescope search around for other people who are out there there are telescope groups astronomy groups just groups of people that have the right equipment they are gathering on saturday october 14th so you know use the internet search locally see if there's someone around and you might be able to get some people that know a lot more than you do and they'll help you be safe um but of course take your own precautions do your own research this episode will have links to things that you can use as that uh background to be safe but however you decide to view the sun safely on october 14th it really is a fantastic orbital event that really gives us a chance at understanding the true scale of our solar system and have a true human experience with it. So we hope that you are able to watch the annular solar eclipse on October 14th. For those around the world who will not have the solar eclipse, we will be posting like crazy. We'll, we will be sharing what we can. And obviously there will be plenty of people online on social media that will be sharing it as well. NASA will obviously have their amazing technology pointed at the sun at the path of totality so you can get the ring of fire i'm sure they will have some very very interesting views and some solar activity but whatever you do be safe have fun and we hope you get a chance to see the annular solar eclipse this has been today in space as always thank you for joining us you can help support the podcast by telling a friend or someone who you know loves space that wants to dive even deeper into this stuff uh, we're always here for that. So check us out at Today in Space on TikTok, Today in Space Pod on Instagram and Twitter slash X. We are also on X at El Greco, E-L-G-R-3-C-O. That's my personal account. And we're t- on Today in Space Podcast on Facebook as well. You can also help us out by checking out our shop, ag3dprinting.etsy.com and our 3D printing lab at ag3d-printing.com and at AG3D Printing on Instagram. It is our 3D printing lab where we bring ideas into reality. Our latest here was our dark James Webb Space Telescope that we 3D printed. This is our model of James Webb that was made specifically for 3D printing because James Webb is made of so many thin, delicate parts. We wanted something that could be printed using your regular at-home 3D printer, your FDM, FFF 3D printer with filament. And we also have a resin-based version as well. But we're doing a lot of stuff there. And we also have awesome premium 3D printed products like our Starship Rocket Pen, which you can pick up at ag3dprinting.etsy.com or todayinspace.myshopify.com. That helps us uh, tremendously. It helps us fund projects and make travel for events like this and starship here in the future as we get ready for test launch number two keeps lights going and helps us continue to spread love and spread science here on the internet so it's a great way to help support us it could make a great gift for the space nerd in your life or yourself uh, so you can go check that out we'll be running some sales so make sure to look out for that but all the money goes to help supporting us here so we really do appreciate that those are the many different ways you can help support us and as always we appreciate every single one of you that listen or watch us every single week if you haven't already please make sure to subscribe wherever you are watching us or listening to us on the internet and please make sure to spread the word so until next time be well spread love and spread science we see you on the next episode of today in space see ya